making Welsh rarebit. And this is an old dish that my dad used to make for me when I was young as a kid. It was a Saturday night meal, very casual, very simple food, but it always was yummy and I looked forward to it. It was, for me, a special treat. Um, simple to make and you can jazz this up any way you want. But this is the backbones of the recipe. I have my saucepan and I'm going to add three tablespoons of butter and I'm going to melt it once it's melted. It's going to take a minute or two. You don't want it to brown. I'm going to add three tablespoons of whole wheat flour. This is a white whole wheat flour, which I think will be nice in this, but if you have the brown whole wheat flour, that's fine too. It just gives it a nice nutty texture, basically making a roux. So once the butter starts melting, which it is, I'll add the flour and I'll whisk that together. So then that goes. Mm, I mean, that just smells fabulous already. And then into this, I'm going to add, how much do I have? I have um, one teaspoon of the dry mustard, and you can find this in the spice section. There's a few different kinds. Um, I like the one in the yellow can, but that goes in, the dried mustard. This is going to be spicy, so be prepared. That goes in. Mm. And this, the spices, the seasonings in this is to taste, so if there's something you don't care for, you can certainly leave it out. Cook that in a little bit more. I'm going to have a sprinkling of black pepper. It goes in. And I have a few last ingredients I'm going in the end. So once this starts cooking, and you can trace the whisk through the pan and you know, it makes a mark. You're just about ready. I'm going to add some beer. You can pick a beer of your choice. I'd use a good hearty beer. I wouldn't use a light beer or you might want to use an imported beer. I'm going to add this. This is the backbone of your sauce and it will bubble up. Oh, it smells like beer and butter. Wait till the cheese joins the party. Mm, smells good. So I'll probably add the kind of beer that you like to drink because it is a, a big flavor in this dish. I think I could be done with the whisk at this point. So this is going to warm up now. We're going to melt the cheese. So I have one pound that I've grated. You don't want to put it in whole. You definitely It will go a lot faster if it's grated or you chop it really fine. Uh, extra sharp cheddar cheese. You can use whichever brand you like. And the sharper the better if you like it really sharp. I mean they come in different degrees of sharpness, if that's right. So now you just have to be patient and let this cheese melt down. And I've used three quarters of this beer here. I'm going to keep an eye on it and watch it. You might have to add a little more at the end or not at all, depending on the consistency, because this is a sauce, um, so you want it to be runny and sauce-like. And then into this, this is to taste. I have a half a teaspoon of prepared horseradish. This is the white horseradish. That goes in. And I'm going to add some hot sauce. Once again, this is to taste. I like it spicy. I'm going to add quite a bit. Probably when I was a kid, when my dad made it, probably not so much hot sauce in it, but I'm older now, so. And then a grating of nutmeg. Once again, to taste. Or you could leave it out all together. Kind of experiment. This is going to cook until all that cheese is melted, and then I'll show you how we're going to plate it up. This is the time we've been waiting for, and I know I've been waiting for. I'm going to show you two ways to plate our rarebit. The first one is the more traditional. I've made some toast points and buttered them. I used a farmhouse white bread, but if you want pumpernickel or rye, whatever floats your boat. So we're going to ladle the cheese sauce all over the toast points. Just like that. And the toast is going to soak up all the cheese. I can smell the beer and the horseradish. 
And to make it look pretty, I'm going to put a tomato on top, but you could saute mushrooms, put it on top. You could cook some asparagus tips and put those on top. Whatever you want to do from here is yours. I'm just going to simply put a tomato. You know, tomato goes good with cheese. So there is our plate of Welsh rarebit. This is the way I used to have it when I was a kid. My dad would take four saltines, always had to be four, on a little plate. This was a child serving, but I had more than one plate, trust me. Um, and he would just simply ladle the sauce on top of the saltine crackers. Crackers have that nice salt and the crunch. And this was a fabulous Saturday night meal. Sometimes it'd be a salad that went along with it, but most of the time I was perfectly happy with just my saltines and the sauce because it really truly is all just about the sauce. So enjoy your Welsh rarebit.